Okay, in this video now, what we're gonna do is take the Ultimate Go Notebook and we're gonna chunk that up and vectorize it. So in our last video, the next one, our ver the last one in this series, which will be next, um, we could leverage all that information and build a very simple sort of chat app. There's an art to how you chunk your data. I've got some chunks already in the repo. We're gonna kind of look at that. And then this is gonna be a multi-stage sort of process that we'll go through. Um, but it should give you enough information to start thinking about the content you have and sort of how to chunk and vectorize it. In the AI training repo, you're gonna see I have book.txt. Now, what this is, is just a text representation of the Ultimate Go sort of notebook uh, in a very raw form. You can see like page numbers are here, the table of contents is still there, um, and code listings are here, like everything's sort of here in the raw. Now, what we need to do is find a way to chunk this information in some reasonable context-oriented way um, so we can vectorize that information and then be able to present it to a user in an, in an intelligent way. It gets interesting also about like how many words you, you might want to vectorize at a time. Again, this is gonna be much more of an art than a science. Now, one of the first things I did already with the raw book, and I've given it to you, is I've sort of taken chunks of it. So the, this processing's already been done, and I didn't wanna go through this again with you, so I've given it to you. It's not a very large file. But I already went ahead and I thought, okay, what chunk of information would I wanna vectorize that has meaning? And I essentially used the table of contents um, to do this. So I went through the table of contents, found those chunks related to the table of contents. You can see here that each chunk kind of starts with an entry. Um, and I said, okay, this is a chunk of information that I want to vectorize. I felt at the time that this chunk would have contextual meaning um, across, say, any other sort of section or chapter in the book. So that was one strategy that I went. Now, some of these chunks get really large, so I would have to chunk the chunks. Um, but again, there, there's the art and the science of that. So what we're gonna do is just assume that we've already done the first stage of content cleanup. We've gone through the raw content. We've identified a chunk of content that we want to vectorize, put into the um, database that we can sort of chat again. So the idea is that if I ask about um, simplicity, hopefully this chunk is the most similar chunk, let's say, and then we can send this content into the LLM to answer a question about simplicity. Now that we've got the chunks, we've got to do a few things though. The first thing we want to do is vectorize each of these chunks. And in order to vectorize, we need a, an, a, a model that knows how to do the embeddings. Now we had played already with um, one of the models in a previous video. We're gonna leverage that. I'm trying to remember, I'll do an Olama list here. Um, and that's the this one right here, the MXBAI embed large, which lets us um, take text and create vector embedding. So we're gonna use that. And we're gonna break it up into um, some smaller parts here so we can see what's going on. So the first thing I wanna do is create the embeddings. I'm gonna comment out um, that code for us right now and just focus on the create embeddings function here on example six. Now, what this does is gonna create a, a document called book.embeddings, just so we can see it. Normally we wouldn't write these embeddings to disk. We would just go right directly to the database, but you know, this is training. I want you to see the, kind of the different steps that we're taking here to do that. And so we're gonna create a book.embeddings file we're gonna start Olama like we did before, but we're gonna use the embed large model. We're then gonna open up our book.chunks file. Um, and then what we're gonna do here, um, actually this is already saying if the file exists because here I'm creating the book.embeddings file. It doesn't already exist, so we'll create it. And then what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna read 
the entire books.chunks file, bring that all into memory. A little inefficient, but it's not that big and I've got a lot of memory, so that's fine for what we're doing. I'm then using this regular expression to basically split out all the different chunks that I have. So I'll end up with a, a slice of each chunk that we've chunked out in the book. I'll trim out the, the chunk header that I created. I was just random. I used like an HTML sort of syntax, but that could have been anything. And then we're going to take that chunk and we're going to send it to the LLM to get an embedding. And then I'm going to put it into this document and I'm going to write that embedding to disk in a JSON format that we can read in the next step. Now, normally, again, you wouldn't write this to disk. You would just go right to, in our case, our vector database. But um, if we do this in steps, we can see the different steps. I think it will be better from a training perspective. So hopefully you understand everything we're doing. We're going to read the chunks. We're splitting those chunks into a collection of chunks based on those markers, and then we're going to send each chunk to Olama um, with the embedding model to get the embedding information. And we're just going to write that um, to disk. And right now I've commented out everything else that we would do, just create the embeddings. That will be for example six. So I should be able to say make example six. And you can see there's 365 chunks. You can see the API embeddings endpoint being hit in our local Olama server. Um, doing it pretty quickly. Again, we're just writing everything to disk right now. And before we know it, we'll have our 365, it says 364. So maybe I got a little bug there, or maybe I counted, started at zero. Um, not important for where we're going. Um, but you see that we now have the book dot embeddings file. Now this file is really large, so we're get ignoring it. So if you're following along, you could just do what I did, comment out everything else, and you'll have this, this file that's there. Now you can see this very first piece of JSON. It has the text that we chunked and then the embedding or the vector that was created from that chunk. And then you can see we've got the next one. That's the chunk and we've got the embedding. So I've got this large JSON document of text and the vector embedding related to that text. That's pretty cool, right? Okay, so now that we've done that, the next thing to do is to insert these chunks into our Mongo um, database. So I'm gonna uncomment this out. We're gonna take a look. We need to get our database up and running again. So I'm gonna go back into our make file and I'm gonna use that dev up command, the dev up. If you remember, um, we'll run compose and that will run um, our MongoDB. We'll also run the open web um, UI that um, we can leverage to play um, with the models as well. But I need the MongoDB up. So um, we're going to use that. Let's see. I'm going to do a make dev up. If you've been following along in the other projects, you kind of have this already set up. So it's good. Um, make dev up. It's pulling. I must have cleaned up my Docker stuff. So let it pull that. Um, in the meantime, I'm going to open up another terminal window to our training repo. I did uh, recently a, a sort of Docker image cleanup. So as that's going, let it go down there. Um, I, I brought back this here. And once that's done, luckily I'm on a fast network here. Um, it should be able to run the open web buoy and the MongoDB is already sort of downloaded. There we go. And so while that's still running here, let's go through the code for setup database and then insert. So setting up the database is something that you've seen already. We're going to connect to our local Mongo database, which I'm trying to run now with the dev up. Um, database will be example five. The collection will be book. And what we'll do is we'll create that book collection. And then again, really important, if you remember from one of the other videos, we've got to create this vector index with Mongo, and we've got to match the same number of dimensions that we're getting back from our embedding model. Now, different embedding models have different sets of dimensions. At, at, at Prediction Guard, we're starting to play with a new 
model that has like, I think 768 dimensions. So um, the dimension size could affect performance, right? If you've got a smaller number of dimensions that you have to do vector math again against, it's going to be faster. But also, maybe because you've got less dimensions, you have less accuracy, right? So again, there's, there's an art and a science to this. Um, but I would also argue there's a point of diminishing return once you get above probably a certain number. So I'm kind of excited to get my hands on the new embedding model at Prediction Card and see if that 768 dimensional vector is any better or worse um, than the one we're using here. But at the end of the day, you got to make sure that you're matching that number appropriately. So sometimes when you're playing with different um, vector models, you might have to change this index. Um, the path is going to be embedding. Uh, we're using that cosine for the similarity. We'll create that index. Um, and this is how we'll, we'll sort of do that. I'm also creating a, a unique index on this ID field. And we'll do that. So the setting up of the database is essentially just making sure that we've got the indexes we need in the collection that we're going to use. Now, once that's done, what we're going to do is we're going to open up that book.embeddings document. We're going to start scanning over that document one line at a time. I've made sure that each JSON document um, is a unique line in the file. We'll unmarshal that JSON document into this ID text and embedding. We'll already check to see if that document is in the database by doing a DB find one. It shouldn't be. Um, now, actually, it might be. I don't know if I've cleaned up the, uh, the database here. So what I might do is uh, maybe I, uh, we'll just, if it's already there, that's fine. So we'll, we'll do that. Um, no error documents, and then we'll insert that. So the idea is we're going to insert now all these embeddings into our database. I'm assuming that we're good here. We are. There's our Mongo Atlas now running. And so now what we'll do is we'll finish running our example five, which should put all of these embeddings, and then we'll quickly sort of look to see that they're there. So um, this again is going to be make example, um, not five, it's six. So. Boom. So my guess is, is that I probably had these already in the Mongo database from playing before. If you're running this at home, that's probably taking a little bit longer. But now what we've done is we've got each of these chunks in our Mongo database. Now, how can I verify that? I did ask you to install the Mongo shell at some point using brew. So I'm going to open up my Mongo shell here. Let me just give myself a little bit of room. Make Mongo shell. That's going to connect to the uh, local Mongo. Starts you in test, but if you remember, um, when we set up the database, we want to use example five. So now we're in the example five database. And the collection name is book. And I'm sure at the top of the make file, yeah, see db boards delete many. But what we're going to do is we're going to say db book. Um, I think I want to say find. I think it's find. Maybe I don't ever remember. It might be just find. Let's let's see. Let's see how good my find with an open document. Ah, so maybe we should do it where we just find uh, 19. All right, let's do this. So find, um, and I think I can just say ID, ooh, this is probably not going to work. I should have practiced this first. Ah, it worked, yay. So here's 19 right there, and you can see we now have a chunk that has ID 19, the micro-optimizations, and sort of the embedding for it. I think we had like 300 of these, right? So there's the 300th one or the 300th chunk, there it is, and it's related to that. So we've got that in there. What, what I'm going to do, just in case you're in the repo, is add this for you too. So you'll see that, and then you can um, go back into the make file and, and play with that. Pretty cool. So now what we've done in this video is essentially taken a lot of what we've learned already and sort of put it all together. 
So we've now created this embeddings file. Every line is a, a JSON document. It's based on these chunks that I pre-created for you. There's where some of the art is for your own content. How do we want to chunk that um, to get some you know, performance with accuracy, you'll see in a second. And then what we've done is we've put all of that in a Mongo database, a vector database using Mongo. You can use any other, any vector database you want. Um, and we've got now these chunks with these embeddings. So the next step and the final step, which we'll do in the, in this last video is to write a tiny little chat app, console based, nothing fancy, where we can ask the user for a question. We'll uh, vectorize that question. We'll do a vector search against our Mongo database, find the most similar chunk. Then we'll take that content out of the chunk. We'll pass it to the LLM and ask it to form a proper response about that. And we've got essentially a full-fledged RAG sort of app, but we've walked through step-by-step step on how to get there.